Wow, the 10th Pro Food Policy International Conference is on live through YouTube, Naver TV and KTV channel of the Korea Institute for Food Industry Cluster. Now, let's talk about the functional K-Food global expansion strategy through session three. For this, I will introduce to you the Professor Yi Hongjin from Chungang University as a moderator. He has been studying the molecular mechanism elucidation of functional foods. I would like to hand over the microphone to the Professor Li. Please welcome. Thank you very much for nice introduction. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Hong Jin Li, a professor at Chungang University. And actually, it is my great honor to be the chair of the third session Functional K Food Global Expansion Strategy. Following the second session, we will move to the discussion about the global expansion of Korean functional food by sharing the actual strategy. I hope that uh, this session can provide a good chance to think about the possibility of functional K food as another uh, K brand following K pop and K quarantine. The subject of this session is functional K uh, food global expansion strategy. And we have three eminent speakers from Korea, China, and USA. The presentation time is 15 minutes, and we will have the Q&A session after all three uh, speakers finish their presentation. It is my pleasure to introduce the first speaker uh, Sang Young Yun, a team manager of Korea uh, Agro Fisheries and uh, Food uh, Trade uh, Corporation, uh, uh, AT. He graduated in Hao University and joined to the AT in 2000. And now he is working to provide the export environment of Korean food to the global market. The title of his presentation is Export Support Program for Domestic Functional Foods. Please welcome Sang Young Yun. 안녕하십니까? AT 한국 농수산 식품 유통 공사 Nice to meet you, everyone. Uh, I am, as introduced, I am Yun Sang Young, the team manager of uh, Korea Agro Institute of the Good Food Trade Cooperation. Now, I would like to especially thank Mr. Tae Jin Yoon as well as all experts and staff members for uh, the providing this opportunity uh, to present uh, at the 10th uh, Food, Food, Food Policy International Conference. The, well, to give you some of the ideas of uh, AT, uh, we are one of the, the sub-institutions of Ministry of Agriculture. Uh, it was established in 1967 uh, that we do the uh, supply management of agro food and logistics and structure management uh, in and out of Korea and export support. And today I would like to uh, focus more on the export support of the programs that we do. And then, um, so the agenda for today, the, I would like to uh, cover the domestic and the foreign trends of the functional food, and then the uh, AT's export support programs for the functional foods, and then also the main export programs uh, that we are currently conducting. And uh, first one, um, so that these are the kind of the things that I have prepared for uh, my presentation. So first, of all, let's uh, hey, take a look at the agro the fisheries and the food uh, export as a status. The uh, the things to the K wave, uh, the export uh, has grown exponentially, exponentially uh, since uh, 2000, uh, 2006. And then, uh, well, thanks to the K drama, uh, especially, was well as you know that uh, well, there is a very uh, popular uh, Korean drama called Winter, the Sonata, and then there was uh, there a lot of other the K dramas that, and then uh, inside the drama, well, 
such as the Tezangun and then Hojun will then will inside the drama about the a lot of the Korean the food were also introduced uh, uh, and then well, alongside with it the ginseng uh, and then uh, as well as other the Korean the special the Korean uh, the ingredients were also introduced in the K drama and then it kind of the boosted as the Korean the exports the Korean the agro the uh, ingredients exports and but uh, unfortunately uh, the uh, the many the many years later, due to this uh, the global economic recession, we have some of uh, these. Uh, we also had this uh, some. Uh, the, it had a negative impact on this uh, the export, and then so currently to um, to tackle this kind of problem, we are uh, aiming at revisiting the the value of the agro the food uh, by introducing the high quality of our agro food to abroad. Uh, the, uh, the high the um, uh, health and aesthetic the weed high uh, the health and aesthetic the qualities so um, so that uh, to boost the export uh, of this uh, the functional food that we uh, our AT have come up with several the programs uh, well, to do so, uh, the, we first ran the kind of the surveys. So we ran uh, the survey um, to the one thousand four hundred uh, to one thousand four hundred food uh, the related companies, uh, and then we have found out that uh, they. Uh, they have several of uh, these uh, challenges, and then we uh, we have found out that that their uh, challenges were uh, that. Um, the first one is that they found out that there was a lack of access to regulatory information of uh, the foreign countries. And then the second one is that uh, the for the any the ordinary the private company, the process uh, the to be recognized as the functional food abroad was very complicated. And then they are also like to the talented workforce. Uh, who can handle the, these kind of the work? So that uh, the, what we can do is that uh, for us uh, to help them to recognize as a functional field, and then also that to, to help them in the, the workforce wise and in the 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 workforce wise, and then also that in the administrative wise. So uh, we the, also that. Uh, in the administrative, so that we, uh, the government, uh, the entities, we came up together. So, and then we not only the government entities, we also worked, we uh, partnered with uh, private sectors to help uh, those, uh, these, uh, the small and uh, meat and small the companies um, in the field of the, uh, the functional food and the health supplementary food, uh, the, so that they can, uh, the, they can can export their the uh, high quality the ingredients to abroad. So the way that uh, we support them is um, to help them uh, to go through this uh, the scientific the scientific uh, the proof proof scientific screening and also to help them uh, look for their the, the foreign agencies and foreign the buyers abroad and as well as help them the, the registration and and the reporting uh, as this uh, function of food abroad and also help them in the marketing wise and the first one as a uh, we help them uh, to be uh, uh, to help them to be recognized uh, to have their uh, ingredients uh, recognized as the functional ingredients. Uh, to do so, uh, the scientific the providing the scientific proof is very important. So. Uh, to uh, we help uh, we assist them uh, in in this wise. Well, there are two ways that we do so. Um, 
because uh, the way that we do so is that to assist them in the preliminary studies, and then the second one is that to run the clinical the studies, and uh, one of these uh, the ways that to give you the uh, the details examples is that um, there is one the ingredients uh, that the ingredients was the system in the leaf. And then uh, the inside the sesame leaf, uh, there was one the the ingredients called the rosemary, and, um, the rosemary, and then after we ran this uh, the test, and then oh uh, well, we after we have uh, found out we have run the, some kind of studies that we have found out that there were already some the preliminary studies, so that we could use them as a scientific proof, so that and then to have that ingredient to be rather stored as a functional food. And then for this, uh, the ginseng, um, this year in Japan, uh, there uh, we are, uh, there is currently in the Japan, there is a one uh, clinical study, cl clinical test has been going on uh, in related to the how the ginseng can improve a person's uh, the memory, the span. So that the reason that uh, well, we, the, the reason that the clinical test is uh, the needed is that the but among these uh, existing the preliminary studies, well, that the, it may not comply with this uh, the standards that's required in Japan. So that in each country, this may the standards and the the requirements may differ. So that's that's why uh, we help them uh, the, in that in that regard as well. And we. We also, uh, and then what we are aiming to do is that for those companies, uh, we are we also help them um, in the export to uh, to present their uh, the ingredients and the food in the uh, export uh, expos and then ex exhibitions because. Uh, so that uh, to have these uh, to have their uh, the ingredients of the uh, to have their ingredients available in many different sales channels so that for the uh, the functional food but um, if they can be uh, exposed in the expos um, or the it can be noticed by the, the professional buyers. So, uh, to give you more details about the expo, uh, the export uh, supporting uh, the projects, this one is uh, this uh, what we are uh, doing at AT. Uh, we are not only how we are uh, covering this entire process all the way from the development of this uh, the item, all of, uh, the, from this uh, almost a final stage, which is overseas marketing, so that uh, each uh, the company for interest. Uh, may, uh, but maybe but they can apply um, uh, the through this uh, through this our website, and then the second one is the. Um, this uh, how to be how to register as a functional food in abroad. So nowadays, well, this uh, exporting countries they can they can be vary, and then the well the the standard and then the the demand of the the final consumer is has been very high. So that and then the condition for the safety of the ingredients has been very high as well. So that's uh that there is a lot of this uh, the documentations that are required for each country. So that we are uh, helping them uh, to for those companies uh, to re to to uh, to get uh, to help them assist them uh, to getting all those um, getting all those uh, the documentations and um, and also the uh, as I have mentioned we help them the promotions and so. For we also help them uh, those uh, companies. Um, uh, well, if those uh, if any of our companies are interested in uh, the marketing their products overseas, uh, we help we assist them. We provide them some of the subsidies. Um, so, the, for more details, please refer to our website. 
and uh, we uh, for uh, have a lot of detailed uh, export related information uh, the agro food related information and then uh, that is uh, all those information that are covered in the kati uh, kati.net um, and then one one of these uh, the highly popular part of uh, the program that we are conducting uh, at AT is that every uh, uh, the localization of the program and the those uh, the applicants uh, are these uh, the those who the local companies who are, are interested in exporting their ingredients and and then also those those who those company foreign companies who are importing the Korean the agri food are the are the capable for are eligible for applying for this program. So and then the it is non tariff. So uh, we have a lot to details uh, the regulatory and then the uh, regulatory and then also we have this uh, the advisors. So that's um, and we also have this uh, labeling uh, related assistance so that we also that we help those companies in design wise of uh, the labeling design wise and then the dosage so that's because uh, so uh, for those uh, packaging the labeling are those kind of so for those importing companies can be helped um, can get can get a lot of assistance in this wise as well. So for more detailed information, well, please uh, contact me at any time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yu, for the great uh, presentation. Uh, he gave the good summary of the uh, functional food trend, and it's really good to know that there are different kinds of the support program for the export of Korean functional foods from AT. Thank you again. The second presentation was scheduled to be provided by Gao Peng, a vice president of China Healthcare Association. However, due to his time conflict, his colleague Edward will present instead. The title of his presentation is Strategies for Domestic Raw Materials to Enter China. Please welcome Edward. Hello. Thank you. Good afternoon. Nice meeting you all on broadcasting. My name is Edward, and I work at China Healthcare Association. Sorry that the original speaker, Mr. Gao Tong, can't make it for he got some urgent matter with short notice. So I'm here to step in for him. And I'm very grateful to have this opportunity to share information about the pathway for K food raw materials to enter China. Now, uh, I'll start my presentation. So, as I'll be engaging in food consulting business for many years, today I'd like to walk you through some essential procedures for exporting raw materials to China. To give you a sneak peek, first, I will introduce Chinese regulation on food raw materials, or we usually call it ingredients to narrow down the definition and only focus on the eatables. Then uh, there are several regulations that allow foreign ingredients into China directly without further registration notification procedures. And if it cannot be imported directly to China, you need to register it, the, register it first. So the second half of my presentation will help you understand what kinds of ingredients can be registered with the authority and to do so, what will be the possible ways? Specifically for novel food ingredients and new food additives. Now, uh, let's look at the background of Chinese food regulations. The custom is responsible for the supervision and the management of imported food safety. And our case of uh, imported novel food ingredients and new food additives category are reviewed by the National Health Commission, which can decide whether to give approval. And this applies to ingredients that require registration. And in 2015, 
the authority began to issue inspection and quarantine certificate for inbound commodities. That is to say, to like raw material cross the border, you need to uh, you need to register and you need this inspection and quarantine certificate. Then you might want to ask, how can I know if the ingredient is okay to just ship to China and distribute? Well, that's easy. Uh, there are several lists that you can refer to. China Food Composition Table for the first one. And we have a list of uh, materials that are both food and medicine, list of uh, approved strains for food and the uh, unparalleled for infant food. Besides the list that are pending to update from time to time, we got thousands of standards established both at uh, at the national level and industrial level, covering raw materials, additives, and, uh, and the nutritional notif uh, fortifier. The authority has also been actively uh, approving new ingredients. So let me take you from here and show you more a bit more uh, more a bit about the approving regulation system. One of the approving system is for novel food ingredients, aka novel food ingredients registration. There are four categories in China, including animals, plants, and microorganisms. Ingredients separated from animals, plants, and microorganisms. Food ingredients with original structure changed, and other new developed food ingredients. Once you know which category your food raw material belongs to, you can proceed with the formal registration. The whole process is presumably difficult, to be honest. But as long as the required documentation are satisfactory, uh, the rest of it would be much easier. I work for an agency that specializes in this area, and we have represented many client companies to get authorities approval. Now, let me give you a breakdown of this process. First, you need to complete three reports, toxicology test, product quality inspection, and safety risk assessment report at the inspection agencies. And you need to prepare registration submission. Then you submit to the registration dossier to the National Health Commission and get accepted. After that, there will be a technical review. The review meeting is held every two months. After this review meeting, you will have the chance to submit supplementary data within one year deadline. And after that, you will have a second round of technical review by the authority. After that, if all of the materials, all of the data are compliant with the Chinese regulation, then they will give you the restriction approval and they will release a notice. And of course, if not complying with the Chinese regulation, you won't, you won't be approved. I would also like to stress the toxicology test, as we all know that safety is the utmost priority. The authority would pay extra attention on how the test is done based on different types of ingredients including non-microbial uh, ingredients and the microbial ingredients. There are several tests required for registration. So on the screen, these checked boxes indicated, uh, indicate that the test needed to conduct. Once, uh, Next, I'm going to take you to the submission. As you can see, the list of documentation is quite long, so I won't repeat it. But you can see the screen on the item C. I would like to stress this letter C, safety assessment report. Uh, this report is essential to the registration. In order to prepare this report, you need to get safety opinion from China National Center for Food uh, safety risk assessment or self step and they will issue notice with their official comments, which is valid the most to the approving authority. 
then the authority will decide whether to give uh, your approval based on the accident notice. Then let's move on the food additives. By definition, a new category of food additives means the additives is not included for certain use per current regulation and standards mentioned at the beginning. So if you wish to seek the authority's approval, here are the categories to consider. Category one, that is the food additives that are not listed in the national food safety standards. And two, food additives that are not in the list of approved food additives by the Ministry of Health announcements. And the third, food additives for the expansion of use or added amount. And when you proceed with this registration, food additives also require conducting tests as well. You need to complete a toxicology test and the product quality inspection at the inspection agencies and prepare submission dossiers. Then you submit that to the National Health Commission and get accepted. When the submitter data needed, uh, you will still have the chance to give the submitted data to the authority within one year deadline. And after that, if it's compliant with the registration, approval, uh, a registration a process and the regulation, they will give you the approval. And if not, your submission won't be approved. Once again, there are submissions required, including generic, generic names, food classification, added amount of scope of use, also data of uh, docu documents that justify that is technically necessary and effective. Quality specification, product process, and inspection method, and inspection methods of the additives in food. D, safety assessment data, which covers the raw material and source, chemical structure and physical properties, production process, toxicology test report and the quality inspection report. You will also need to submit your label, instruction and samples. The documentation from other countries and international organizations are essential as well because they can prove, uh, they can, uh, prove that your production and use are, uh, uh, are uh, are lawful in your country, and this can contribute to the safety assessment as well. Documentation that allow the production and sales in the country of origin, as well as documentation that can prove the manufacture in the country of origin, uh, which can help you pass this inspection validation. So that is all for my today's topic. Thank you all for listening. And I'd like to give my contact over here. So if you have any question regarding my topic today, you can reach out to me at any time. It's truly a pleasure to meet you all today. Thank you for having me here to talk about Chinese food raw material regulation and share with you the business opportunity in China. I know because of the COVID-19 pandemic, most of us are home-based these days, but I feel that we've never been so connected with this online conference. Again, thank you for your time, and please stay safe and healthy. Okay. Uh, thank you, Edward, for the nice uh, presentation. And he gave us the great uh, summary of the uh, current regulation in China. And I think it was a great opportunity to understand the current regulatory environment for the raw materials in China. And Edward, please stay with us for the next uh, half hours, please for the Q&A session? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Uh, the last speaker I want to introduce in this session is uh, Jay Lee. Uh, Jay Lee is CEO and a senior consultant of JMB Food Consulting in USA. He graduated Yonsei University and he has 15 years experience in food industry in USA. 
The presentation will be given by a pre-recorded video due to his unpredicted uh, time conflict. The title of his presentation is U.S. Dietary Supplement Market Trend and Post-Corona Strategy. Please welcome Jay Lee. Hello, uh, my name is Jay Lee, uh, CEO of JAB Food Consulting. Uh, I'm joining the conference from um, Los Angeles, California. Actually, I'm in the uh, Orange County in California, the same time zone uh, with Los Angeles. Uh, it's my honor to join this conference. Um, and because of COVID-19, uh, I'm really sorry to uh, meet you offline, but still we can meet online. And I'm presenting uh, the slide for 50 minutes, and then uh, I'm gonna ask uh, answer some questions from audience. So today's topic is U.S. dietary supplement uh, market trend and post-COVID uh, strategy. So let me briefly uh, look at the U.S. market side. Uh, U.S. Uh, dietary supplement market is growing constantly. And then uh, in 2019, it's estimated uh, $31 billion uh, U.S. market. And this year, uh, supposed to be increasing uh, constantly, but uh, the COVID-19 impact the market. So I'm not sure this is gonna be uh, decreasing this year or increasing a little bit. Uh, we'll see uh, at the end of the year. So these are the popular dietary supplement uh, product. So this one, still many people uh, consuming multivitamin, and also vitamin D, C, and protein, calcium, uh, omega-3, and green tea, magnesium, probiotic, uh, iron, and vitamin E, turmeric. So this is typical uh, market segmentation, but I will look at other trends in the later slide. Also, you need to understand the ethnic group because the uh, U.S. market uh, consists of many ethnic groups, such as white uh, and Hispanic, and black and Asian, and other uh, ethnic groups. Uh, 2010, this is from the statistic from uh, uh, U.S. Census uh, Agency, and then 65% is a white Asian group. So when you call it mainstream, uh, typically we are uh, talking about white, um, white Caucasian group. So it's a, it's a majority, but uh, one of the trend is uh, year 2015, uh, Hispanic gonna be 30% of total market. And then also uh, Asian group is growing to uh, from 5% to 8%. So that means um, right now, mostly, you know, food and dietary support uh, supplement market is focusing on the majority of white group, but later on, uh, many other ethnic groups are increasing. So you need to take a look at other groups' behavior and um, characteristic also. And then these are uh, trends uh, before COVID-19. And then uh, I want to show you a quick uh, uh, overview on the uh, trend. So one of the trend is keto product. So keto uh, diet product, uh, there's a various uh, categories. So uh, you can eat by protein bar, and then also there's a capsule type. And then many manufacturers, the food and dietary supplement, they name it after uh, keto. So mixed with keto salad, keto protein bar, uh, keto capsule. So, so you name it, so you can combine with uh, keto characteristic into uh, existing product. So this is one of the increasing market. And the second one, I see uh, the collagen product is very uh, popular among the ladies, um, especially young ladies, female group. Um, I see a lot of collagen product on uh, Amazon and online uh, shopping mall. 
So these are the collagen is one of the uh, high racketing uh, product. And third one is plant-based uh, protein and also vegan product. So as you know, the, um, even typical food market, uh, Beyond Meat or Impossible uh, Burger, many people are interested in the plant-based uh, protein. Uh, so uh, meat alternative product and also dietary supplement market adopting this plant-based uh, product. So you can see uh, plant-based, uh, you know, soy protein or pea protein, something like that. Also vegan is a, a rising market and then you can see vegan type omega-3 and vegan type, um, you can mix with the typical uh, dietary supplement with the vegan product. And then also uh, seaweed. Uh, seaweed is consumed as a uh, food. So many people, uh, American people started uh, looking at the seaweed. Uh, Korean seaweed is very famous. So you can see the, uh, the seaweed product in Costco. Also some manufacturer um, process it into a dietary supplement. So you can uh, manufacture as a seaweed powder or some manufacturer uh, selling under uh, capture time. So these are one of the trends. And also the ginseng. So Korean ginseng product, red ginseng and ginseng is a popular product in US market. So uh, even uh, COVID-19, you know, people looking for uh, immune uh, boosting product. So Korean ginseng is very famous. And then selling, uh, selling more uh, product during the pandemic because people can put in uh, this product. And then also uh, mushroom. So mushroom, there is many kinds of mushroom. Uh, for example, uh, rice mushroom or some other all kinds of uh, mushroom. They uh, process to uh, capture time or powder time. So sending very, uh, it's a hot item. Also, CB uh, cannabidiol product is uh, the one of the hot topic. But uh, Korean market is, I think, is uh, still illegal to sell the uh, CBD product. But in the U.S., you know, some states still the prohibited uh, CBD, but uh, still hot uh, selling item. Also, one of the trend is pro probiotic. So people. Uh, looking for a good healthy digestion product. Uh, they, uh, many consumers consume uh, probiotic uh, dietary supplement. Uh, some capture type, some products are powder type. So this is one of the trend. Okay, so how to access the U.S. market? Actually, the U.S. market is the biggest market in, in the world, but it's it's not easy to access uh, at a time. So I recommend uh, the foreign exporter, especially Korean uh, supplier, to start small because uh, US market is big, but still uh, there's uh, some barrier. So easy way to use, easy way is use uh, e-commerce, especially uh, Amazon. Um, a lot of food, uh, food and dietary supplement uh, market, um, the trend is selling to the online market. So Amazon is one of the biggest one. So, and then also uh, the one big news is a GNC. GNC is a dietary supplement uh, retail stores and they recently go bank bankrupt. So uh, this tell you that um, Amazon and other e-commerce market is an uh, emerging market. So I think easy way is using uh, Amazon platform. So you can um, access to Amazon account and then set up your account and testing the market. Start small and then you, can, you will see the response. And then also a lot of, um, you can do some research on the Amazon. They providing some uh, analytics so you can see what item is hard or uh, what uh, consumer base looking for certain uh, type of products. So you, you will see the many data from Amazon. And also uh, SNS, like Instagram, or Facebook, uh, Twitter, something like that. 
So many uh, young generation is using uh, SNS uh, media. So easy way to uh, do the marketing is using SNS, especially uh, you collaborate with a SNS influencer. Uh, it's an easy way. So you can, uh, the one or two you can use. And also big data, as you know, the recently uh, fourth, fourth industrial revolution uh, characterized uh, big data, especially Google and Amazon. If you do the ad advertisement on, on Amazon and Google, you, you will see their big data platform. So even me, uh, I'm consulting many clients over uh, globally. So I'm using those data to analyze what kind of consumer uh, clients access to my website and then uh, what is the you know, age group. So you will see a lot of uh, good uh, data information. And then uh, the one uh, trend is, as you know, COVID-19 uh, prohibited uh, in online meetings. So uh, this year, uh, in, 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 there was a natural food show, the Expo West. It was canceled because of uh, COVID-19. So from now on, I think the food, uh, typical food show, uh, it is not easy to uh, contact with a new client. So uh, alternatively, you need to find a way to uh, marketing effort on online. And then you need to continue your ongoing marketing effort, uh, not such as a food expo, but you continuously uh, find your uh, consumer group through the SNS or advertisements and that. Okay, so uh, when I tell, uh, explaining about Korean uh, dietary supplement in US, actually it's kind of beginning stage. Uh, that means uh, Korean product, uh, you know, some niche market uh, is, you know, Korean ginseng and some seaweed product, uh, but other typical uh, dietary supplement like, uh, you know, uh, vitamin and generic product, it's not easy to compete with the existing uh, U.S. product. So uh, almost, you know, Korean dietary supplement product are selling Korean local uh, market for Koreans, not for U.S. consumer. So it's not easy to uh, access mainstream uh, right away. So you can start with a uh, uh, local Korean community first, and then you can jump into uh, mainstream. Also, uh, sales channel. So uh, there are many Korean market and then Korean dietary uh, supplement stores, but it's very small size. So you can start small, but uh, if you want to go to a big retailer like the Costco, Walmart, um, you need to have some certain uh, proven record. So it's not easy to go to uh, Costco and Walmart. But if you have some good sales record in Korea, and then you can show them, okay, this is the, our sales record in Korea. And then if you're already working with Costco Korea, this is the one of the good uh, proven record. So you can go to uh, Costco in US. And also there, uh, US market, there are many uh, pharmacy retailer, CVS, Rite Aid, Walgreens, uh, many uh, other pharmacy retailers. So you can contact them, but they will see some you know, uh, the trend and then your product is, you know, have potential or not. So you need to show them some record. Then e-commerce. So easy way is you can start with Amazon. So Amazon, you can search through the uh, uh, data on uh, what kind of consumer looking for what product. You can search it up and then you can start uh, your um, dietary supplement uh, in Amazon. And also uh, marketing effort. Actually, this U.S. market is uh, very uh, difficult. So you need to communicate with the U.S. consumer. So always you need to understand the, uh, the U.S. culture. 
even though you're selling Korean pro uh, product, so you need to understand the U.S. culture. And then this is also you need to understand new normal uh, impacted by COVID-19 because uh, you cannot uh, meet people offline. So online shopping is you know, emerging market. And then uh, good opportunities, people looking for a healthy food and immune system uh, products. So I see local uh, you know, food importer and uh, dietary supplement importer, they are doing uh, business uh, better than before because they selling people looking for healthy food. And then also another uh, new normal is a home office. They, they staying home, home economy and also sustainability, people looking for, uh, you know, uh, eco-friendly product, such as plant-based uh, protein or vegan. And then also uh, subscription economy. People cannot go outside, so many people uh, staying home and they're subscribing some, you know, uh, uh, food or snacks or dietary supplements. So this is one of the way. And then um, overall, the dietary supplement, people uh, spend less money, but over time, they are also looking for immunity products. So this is the threat and opportunity. This is sales growth over after COVID-19. You will see uh, there is a jumping at the end. So March 2020, you know, Im immune uh, supper products going up. So this, one. so this this is going to change the market, technology and COVID-19 economy. You don't know if the recession is coming or not, but the economy uh, situation and population, also regulatory. So these are uh, the factors to change or impact the market. So you need to consider those uh, factors. Okay, so this is my book. Recently I wrote a book about uh, new normal created by COVID-19. So you uh, stay in Amazon. Okay, this is a question from audience. What is the advantage of Korean dietary supplement uh, product in the US market? Okay, so as I mentioned before, it's Korean uh, dietary supplement, uh, you need to find the niche market first, okay? So US market is very big and you know, there are a lot of ethnic groups. So you can start small like a, a selling through Amazon, uh, you set up an account and start small. And then also good thing is recently, uh, K-pop, K-culture is uh, becoming popular. So even uh, it's called Korean quarantine, the Korean way of quarantine COVID-19. Uh, we, um, we can uh, get the benefit from the, those factors. So Korean, Korean brand is very, very popular in this market, especially young generation. So, um, so this is the advantage, Korean brand. And then also, if you are looking for niche market, um, especially uh, the immune boosting product, you will see opportunity. Okay, this is about uh, my presentation. Today I presented for a short time, but if you have question, you can uh, send me email to this address. So enjoy your uh, rest of your uh, conference. I will see you again. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Jay Lee, for the great presentation. And he gave us the great uh, summary of the uh, current status of dietary supplement market in USA. And also, I was really happy to see the ginseng product as one of the uh, trends. So that gave us the good you know, it's the possibility we can expand with our Korean uh, functional foods. Okay, thank you again, Jay Lee. And then uh, now uh, we're gonna move to the uh, Q&A sessions. Uh, Edward, are you still there? Can you hear me? Yes, I'm still here. Hello. Okay. Nice yeah. to see you again. Okay, yeah. So, uh, uh, even though we, uh, the Jay Lee couldn't make it in this session, but he already gave us the, uh, the comments about the question. And now uh, I want to ask the one question to Mr. Yoon. And 
네, 한국말로 예, 할게요. 질문은. 예. Let me ask a question 어, in English. 그 발표하신 그 여러 가지 그 지원 정, 정책을 이제 말씀을 해 주셨는데 There were a lot of different support measures. 위해서 어, 특히 이제 반드시 숙지해야 하는 것들 좀더 신경을 써서 숙지해야 하는 것들 There are um, you have mentioned a lot about the uh, export the measures but is there any things that we our Korean the companies that you need to keep in mind? Well, there are a lot of things, but one thing that I would like to emphasize is that uh, that for those uh, Korean companies who, who are aiming uh, that overseas market, well, is that their distinctiveness uh, or competitiveness. Uh, because well, if uh, one, if our companies would like to uh, the target abroad, well, so there are a lot of the similar products, well, in other countries as well. And the, for the buyer's perspective, well, that to them, well, that uh, well, well, they well from their perspective, well, there is they need to find the kind of the distinctiveness in your um, the products. So they say that well, is your product the uh, the have the cost effectiveness, or is your has the quality or uh, the higher quality, or so they, there should be the kind of the distinctiveness uh, in your uh, in your own quality. So you have to uh, keep that in your mind. So. Uh, so that uh, if you would like to target abroad, uh, you need to study your competitors, your competing uh, the products, then uh, and also do you need to find what kind of the competitiveness that your products has, and I think that. Uh, for this kind of this, uh, the conference that we have today, well, is one of the ways that you can study the, you can gain this uh, global insight in this regard. We go to Edward. Okay, Edward, uh, would you give some comments about what kinds of difficulties or precautions we have to consider for Korean raw materials to enter the China market? Yes, thank you for your question. Well, this actually depends on materials category. Um, in the case that the material is currently being approved for distribution in China, a company can simply follow our custom policies. Uh, on the other hand, if a company has to register the material with the Chinese authority first in order to make inroads, I think the difficulty would be proving the material is safe as I mentioned earlier in my presentation, safety issue is what the authority cares most. So, uh, and based on my experience, foreign companies should be able to provide uh, first the origin of such a material, its biological property, and how to identify what it is, what it is, is and of course the rationale behind the identification methods. The second one is uh, they need to provide toxicology test results from a GLP certified laboratory. This can be conducted in overseas labs as well as in China. The third one is that they need to submit official documentation which can be proof the material is common food raw material in the country of origin. Best if it can show the consumption history is long enough, maybe 30 years, I think it will be very helpful to the restoration. So if they can tackle these issues, there will be higher chance to get the material approved under the Chinese regulation. That's to into China. Okay, thank you very much, Edward. Okay, so now it is time to close the third sessions. Uh, it was a valuable time to understand the current trend of functional foods in the global markets or meaningful, uh, meaningful support programs and as well as the post-corona strategy for the global expansion. I want to express my sincere thanks to all three speakers and participants of the conference all around the world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Yi Hongshin and Yun sang the team manager of AT, and the other participants as well.